Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and I wanted to share with you some battery saving tips for your iPhone or iOS device. These tips are actually straight from Apple, and I'll leave a link to that in the description below. But these tips are from them for iOS. So their first suggestion is to actually update to the latest OS. They're always improving battery, and we do that through our settings, general, and then software update. With iOS 9.1, it brought a bunch of different fixes and battery changes and it seems to have improved it quite a bit for a lot of people. So that should help you, just a simple update. The next thing they suggest is to optimize your settings. The first thing is to actually adjust your brightness to auto, uh, auto brightness, and you do that under display and brightness. And you can see here I have on auto brightness. Now this adjusts the light based on the ambient light within the room. There's some sensors up in the top, and depending on how bright or dark it is, it, dis it changes the display to actually adjust that for you. And if you're in an area where it's a little bit late at night or darker, just turn it down and it will dim the display for you. And it will leave it kind of around that setting. You can also quickly do that through your control center down here at the bottom. Just adjust it here on this slider and that should do the same thing. But that's one way you can save some battery. The next thing has to do with actual power savings. So if you're finding yourself really low on power, 20, 10%, you can go into battery here, again under settings, and under battery you can just enable low power mode. And what this does is turn off all the background activity, meaning it won't check your mail by itself, it won't check anything else. In fact, it basically turns off everything except for text for the most part. It, re it removes some visual effects, all sorts of things to hopefully give you a couple more hours battery life. They say up to three hours more battery life by doing that. So maybe you're down to 10% and you really need your phone, that should help. And you can see the display just dimmed and I actually have it set not to dim. So it's on battery savings and you can see that with the yellow battery in the upper right. So that should help you when you're in a pinch. The other thing is in the same settings window is actually to view what's using the most battery. So right here you can see over the last 24 hours, Paper, which is an alternative to Facebook, they actually own that app, has been using 14% using background activity. That's over 24 hours. If I hit this little time here, this little clock rather, you can see 34 minutes on screen, 59 minutes background. So maybe that's running. We might need to hopefully update that as they did with Facebook. Uh, or maybe just not use it as much. It's really more from use. You can see over the last seven days also, and you can see what's used the most battery there. So you can adjust that some, and you don't really need to close the app from the background, and I'll show you more about that in just a moment, but this just gives you an idea. All the way at the bottom tells you your actual usage. So this was actually plugged in since last charge, but I have 60% battery left, seven hours and 53 minutes usage, 16 hours standby was plugged in while I was driving. Now when I mentioned the background activity, one of the things we can change is actual background activity and what's using that. So if we go back to our general settings here, under general settings we have background app refresh. If we go to that, you'll see I have it turned on. Now I like to have it turned on because certain applications need to use that in order to function. For example, Apple Maps, Google Maps, say you're navigating and you want that to run in the background, you need to have this turned on or it won't run while the app is running. So if it's turned on for some and not others, that's kind of how I use it. So I have all these different applications I've decided I don't want using my information while I'm not using the app or maybe I need it for certain things, leave it on. If you don't, shut it off and that should help save battery. But if you're in a pinch and you need to really conserve battery, use the low power mode, like I said, or just turn this off and that will save you some. The next thing is also background activity for mail. So if you go into your mail settings, you can actually tell it to fetch mail or push mail. So let's go into that. I'm in my mail settings, and what you can see here is it says fetch new data. Now I use push email, but what that does is it checks for mail or basically gets pushed mail from Gmail, things like that will actually push to the device, and that uses more battery. If you go into the actual settings for your email, you'll find that you have select schedule push email fetch or manual if you set it to push the email will push if you set it to fetch it will fetch every so often so if i set it to fetch it will check it every 15 minutes or whatever interval we set and you can set it to manual so it will only check when you go into mail and then you pull down and have it check your mail that's the most battery efficient way other than that it will push it or fetch it every so often and that uses battery in the background as well 
One of the things a lot of people don't realize uses a lot of battery is actual location services. So that's actually found under privacy. So you're in settings again, you scroll down to privacy. Under privacy, we have location services. And location services are used for things like Apple Maps, Google Maps, Find iPhone, and it uses your GPS antenna. Anytime it has to spin that GPS antenna up and turn it on, it uses actually a pretty good amount of power. So you can actually turn that off altogether or adjust it. So you can see here, some of these say always, some of them say while using, uh, others say never. So depending on what those are, you can actually adjust those. So Periscope, for example, while using the app, you can use my location or never use my location. It's up to me, I can turn it on or off. So I like to customize these individually because some of these I actually want to use my, my location, such as Google Maps. If I have a never, it will never give me accurate directions because it's never turning on that GPS antenna. So that's one thing that will definitely help you with battery if you turn that off on the things you don't need. You can turn it off altogether though if you really need to save battery. Another way we can save power has to do with the home and lock screen and that's actually under your notification settings. So again, under general, notifications, you can see all of the different applications here and maybe I wanna turn off notifications for the Apple Store. You can see these are the different options. So we can allow notifications and if we allow them on the home screen, it's actually going to wake the home screen up and show you that notification and it uses battery every time you turn that home screen on so if you're doing that you're going to be using battery if you turn it off you'll save battery i tend to find it doesn't use enough for me but if you get a ton of notifications it definitely makes a difference if you're in an area with low cell coverage or no cell coverage you can save a lot of battery life by just flipping on airplane mode airplane mode will disable all antennas so all cellular all wi-fi all bluetooth antennas it will shut all of those off and save you battery now i wouldn't suggest that normally because then you lose all of the functions of your phone but if you need to save battery and you really have no signal and it makes no difference anyway maybe you're in the country and there's no cell towers nearby flip that on you'll save a ton of battery then when you get back to where you need to be, turn it off. You can also access that here as well in the control center. Now, along with that comes these different antennas. So we have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. If you're not using those, shut those off. But if you're in an area where you're at home or at work and you can use Wi-Fi, you want to use Wi-Fi over cellular. So as long as you have Wi-Fi on, that will use less battery than your cell phone antenna will to say your carrier, which I have here. If I only have one or two bars and my Wi-Fi is stronger, it's going to use less battery because it has to use less power to send those signals and receive those signals. So it's one of those things where you want to actually turn that off depending on how you use it. I suggest using Wi-Fi all the time though, as much as you can, because you'll save a ton of battery if you can do that. To answer questions and kind of debunk some things I've heard in the past on a similar video I've done before, is that you need to do things like calibrate your battery. That just doesn't really need to be done. It's not even, even something Apple mentions or even tells you how to do because you don't need to do it. It's all managed by software. You don't need to fully charge it before using it or fully discharge it. It's a lithium polymer battery, so that makes no difference whatsoever. And Apple will manage that for you. So plug it in when you need to, unplug it when you don't need it or when you need to leave and you should be all set. I've done that for years since actually the first iPhone and never had a problem with my battery in that entire time. So if you have any other questions though or anything you might have heard, uh, be sure to run them by us in the comments below and let us know what you think. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe and like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.